the Microsoft booth and talking to Juan Gilbert, uh, the infamous adventure developer. <laughs> and uh, he's doing a new game for uh, Xbox One, it's called Timbleweed Park. Um, and it's a very classic adventure. Why do such a classic adventure when you could, could do something new? I love classic point and click adventure games. You know, uh, Gary Winnick and I had designed Maniac Mansion, which was really kind of the first, you know, point-and-click adventure game and we were just talking one day about how charming those games were and it just seems that a lot of that is kind of lost and we really wanted to go back and do another real classic point-and-click adventure game so that's why we decided to do a Kickstarter for Thimbleweed Park. And um, the, the, the reason to get it back was also the reason for having this classic interface yeah, I mean, the, the verb interface, that old interface, I've always loved that interface. I, I thought it's, I've always liked that the verbs are right there. You don't have to guess that am I clicking on something, am I going to use it or push it or pull it. The verbs are just right there for you to do. And I've just, I've always liked that interface. And I, I really wanted to use that interface again. And I think that that interface, there's, you know, some interesting design issues around it as you're designing puzzles knowing you've got those verbs it's just it's fun to design for that interface and I wanted to do that again and as a spiritual successor of uh, Maniac Mansion will there be stuff in the game which refers to to that game yeah there's a lot of stuff in Thimbleweed Park that you know reference Maniac Mansion and also Monkey Island uh, you know, because those were very special games to me, and and it's it's kind of fun to like you know poke fun at them a little bit and put in little references for the you know fans to see and go, oh, I recognize Chuck the Plant, or I recognize you know, oh, is that a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle? And it's just it's just fun to put that kind of stuff in the game, and, and I think people like to see that stuff, and we like to put it in as well. Also, some of the characters from the main characters. Uh, for the main characters from the game. Well, I mean, the main characters in the game are these two uh, detectives who are kind of federal agents that are there to investigate this body that's found in the river. So those are those are kind of the two main ones, and then there's three other playable characters that you can play. There's a clown called Ransom the Clown, and you get to play him, and uh, Dolores. She's actually a young game designer in the game, and uh, then there's uh, Franklin, who's a ghost in the game. And you get to play all five of those characters, uh, like in Maniac Mansion, and switch between them and solve puzzles. And uh, hopefully you stick to the humor as well. Yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff in it. I mean, I like to make funny games, so I, I don't know that I could make a serious game. I think if I started to make a serious game, it would just end up being a funny game. And uh, can we expect something something new regarding the gameplay from Tumbleweed, Tumbleweed Park? Well, the gameplay, we are purposely trying to stick to very classic gameplay, you know, so it is those classic point and click, you know, adventure puzzles that people are really used to. I mean, there's a lot that we've learned over the years about designing puzzles. And so, uh, you know, I, I think things are, you know, maybe a little smarter in, you know, kind of how we design the puzzles for it. But we really did want to bring that classic point and click adventure, you know, sensibilities back to people. So we are trying to keep it as traditional as possible. But you probably played also one of the newer, no, newer adventures. Um, so, what kind of um, stuff do you think was good to keep bring the the genre uh, to to a new level? Well, I think there are some things, you know, with kind of modern gamers that you do need to do. Um, you know, back when you know, like when I was doing Monkey Island, you know, you can really start the game out and just like push the player into the pool. It's like, okay, big puzzles solve them, right? And I don't think you can really do that today. So. You know, uh, I think like the very, very beginning of the game will probably ease players into things a little bit, you know, slowly. For, you know, especially for people who've maybe heard about point-and-click adventures but have never played one before. You do kind of need to slowly ease them into that. There won't be like tutorials and helps and all that kind of stuff, but the puzzles themselves will probably just start off. Maybe the first like 15 or 20 minutes of the game might be a little bit easy as we pull people into the game. So that's kind of one of the things that, you know, we're going to do to help new people into it. 
uh, is there stuff you, you you like in modern adventures, but which do doesn't fit to the classical ones you are doing? I uh, you know I, I I mean certainly like like a lot of the art and stuff. You know, like I'm a big fan of Kentucky Route Zero, and I just I love the ambiance and the art and the you know the art design of that thing a lot. I really I really do like that. But I think with Thimbleweed, you know, we we're trying to go for an old school eight bit look, you know, to it. So, you know, we got uh, Mark Ferrari who is the artist on the original Monkey Island. He's doing all the art for the game. So I think it really has a truly authentic, you know, old Lucasfilm games feel to it because it's the same people that made those yeah. old Lucasfilm games. Um, my personal problem with uh, one of the, uh, with all the older adventures was that some was really, really difficult. So some, some puzzles wasn't really logic. So um, you didn't know, you just tried everything how it, until it works. Is it something you want to, um, want to change? Or do you say it's, n it's necessary that it's very difficult? It, I think it's important that the game is difficult, but I don't think it should be difficult because it's confusing, right? If people are just randomly trying inventory, I think as a game designer, I failed at my job. So the puzzles should be hard but logical. And to me, the best way to do a puzzle is if somebody's really struggling and they eventually solve it, you know, once they solve it, they go, oh, I should have thought of that. I should have figured that out, right? That to me is the best feeling to have because then the player doesn't blame me, the game designer. They, they kind of blame themselves for not figuring it out. So, you know, we're spending a lot of time with the puzzles on that, you know, trying to do very logical puzzles that kind of make sense, not kind of arbitrary random puzzles. The, the main character, um, he's, he's obviously dying at the beginning of the game, as far as I know, and we n need to find out why, right? Well, I, I, it's, I mean, there's the body that's like in the river, and he's dead. He's not really the main character. He's, he's just kind of dead. But, but you are trying to figure out what happened to him. You know, what, you know, who, who killed him, and you know, what is the mystery surrounding it? But really, I mean, the whole mystery about the body and stuff, that's kind of like the tip of the iceberg, really. There's a whole other kind of story going on in this strange town, and you're kind of, you know, sucked into it as you, as you start to investigate what happened. So it's no mystery you're solving, it's more like uh, just an adventure. Well, I mean, there's a, there is a mystery there that you're trying to figure out, but, you know, maybe the mystery isn't what you think it is at the beginning of the game, right? It's not, it's not about, oh, there's this dead body, let's go find the killer and arrest them and the game's over, right? It's, it's more like, oh, there's this dead body, wow, this is a really weird town, what the hell is happening here? Um, what kind of games to, do you play when you're not, not developing uh, adventures? Uh, probably, uh, probably you play games, still games. I, you know, I don't. I probably don't play as many games as I would like. A lot of games I play are just, um, you know, mobile games on my phone, because you know I, I have a lot that I'm doing, and so you know, it's just easier for me to, you know, game on my phone and stuff. I played. Um, I haven't. I actually haven't played it in like a month or so, but I played a lot of Hearthstone. I just loved that game, so I, I played a lot. I think I played Hearthstone until I got to the point where people were just kicking my ass too much and then I just like I stopped playing I, I, I got to this level I was I wasn't getting get any better I thought so I stopped playing. Hudson is a game you can can be addicted to. Yeah well you know I spent what six years playing World of Warcraft and I was in like a very hardcore raiding guild and we met three times a week and we raided for like four hours a night and I did that for like six years. So that was like an incredibly addictive uh, thing. And then one day I just quit. I just said, you know what, I can't do this anymore. It's taking up too much of my life. And I just quit World of Warcraft. And um, today, today probably you got more time for, or you, you can choose what kind of games you want to develop. And when you started developing games, uh, in a kind of way, you also decided what you want to do because it, you, um, uh, it was it was the first time you you developed the game, and it was what you, it was what you want to do. Um, but probably there is a difference between the one Gilbert when you you was younger and today. What what is it? 
Well, I think the thing that's so interesting about Thimbleweed Park is that it's a very small team of people and we're just kind of making the game we wanted. And, you know, when I was doing Maniac Mansion or Monkey Island, there was really nobody looking over me, right? I mean, the what the great thing about working at Lucasfilm at that time is they just kind of let us make whatever we wanted to make. And so, you know, we just got to make really great games. And I, I kind of feel like Thimbleweed Park is getting back to that again. It's just, you know, here's a small team of people and we're just going to make a really good game and a really funny game and we're going to do whatever we want with it. And I just, I love having that kind of freedom, you know, and that's, that's what the things like Kickstarter can do for you because you don't have a big publisher that's like looking over your shoulder telling you you can't do something or they want this in because a focus group said so. And so, I mean, I really love that. But is there still a difference between the younger and the, the older one, Gilbert? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm obviously I'm not the same person, right? I mean, I've gone through a bunch of life and I've experienced a lot of things and stuff. I mean, I, I do I do worry that maybe the younger Ron Gilbert was naive enough to just try weird stuff and you know, I think, you know, in any whether you're making movies or writing or games or whatever, I think as you get older and you get more experience, you do tend to try weird things less. Mm -hmm. And I do worry about that a little, you know, and so I do I do kind of try to do a lot of weird things just so I kind of have a little bit of the young Ron Gilbert is still, you know, doing weird and crazy things. But, you know, who knows? So, yeah. This game is coming uh, out exclusively on Xbox One uh, and PC. The, the game will be out on uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux, yeah. which is what the Kickstarter was for. Yeah. And then it's also going to be available on Windows 10 and the Xbox One. Do you have plans for, for other platforms as well at the later point? We don't have any plans right now for other console platforms. Okay, and uh, how long do we need to wait for Timberweed Park? Thimbleweed Park will be out, uh, hopefully, cross my fingers, yeah. cross me my fingers, hopefully in July uh, 2016. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.